Hello, good evening and welcome to this Wound Care Today Facebook Live Seminar. My name is Rosalind Thomas and I'm a podiatrist from Swansea in Wales. Today we're focusing on topical oxygen therapy and how it can be used in the treatment on diabetic foot ulcers. This seminar is kindly supported by Monlika and this evening at any time during the seminar you can submit a question by commenting on the, on the video and I will do my best to answer as many of your questions as possible at the end of this presentation. After the event, you can access your certificate of attendance, which will contribute towards your revalidation and CPD hours. So, we'll now move on to the presentation entitled Topical Oxygen Therapy in the Treatment of Diabetic Foot Ulcers. So, oxygen therapy. Why is it needed? What does it do? How is it used? And what are the results? So our learning objectives this evening are understanding why oxygen is crucial to wound healing, understanding how oxygen is delivered to cells in the healthy body, why chronic wounds are associated with low oxygen levels, and how oxygen therapy can facilitate chronic wound healing. So what is the need for this? Well, as you can see from this slide, we are losing 23 legs a day within England and much of this suffering is avoidable. In England, we are spending over £1 billion a year on diabetic foot ulcers and this can be considerably reduced. And poor diabetic foot care often costs more than good care. So, if we can reduce the prevalence of severe ulcers, we could save the average CCG £1 million a year. So, in wound healing, all these are required for a he wound to heal. If the patient isn't well fed, then you can call on dietetic advice for good nutrition advice to help them heal their wounds. Moisture. Well, we need moisture in the wounds for those cells to migrate across the wound bed to help close that wound. And if the wound's infected, we need to control that infection either by oral antibiotics, topical antibiotics or using antimicrobial dressings. And then holistically looking at that wound, we don't want to be disturbing that wound by repeatedly changing dressings, so we need to have a holistic assessment to ensure we use the correct dressing to not to change the dressings too frequently. And oxygen, we don't really think about oxygen, do we? So, in chronic wounds, if there's a reduced supply of oxygen and there's usually an increased demand in oxygen, how do we get the oxygen there? So you can see on this slide, there are different wounds that have a decreased oxygen supply. With venous insufficiency, you get those legs that are really swollen and so that can reduce the flow to the, to the wounds. If you've got arterial occlusive diseases, those vessels are narrowed and that helps to reduce the flow to the wounds. And with diabetes, those basal membranes in the vessel walls are thickened and that can limit the transfer of the nutrients out of the vessel wall into the tissues to help them heal. And with pressure ulcers, again, the blood supply is, is restricted purely from the pressure and then that causes tissue damage. So, cells that are healing, they require a high demand of oxygen. Similar to when we exercise, the higher energy need, the higher the oxygen. And collagen, for that to mature, its oxygen is crucial to form those triple helix. And with angiogenesis, we know hypoxia kickstarts that angiogenesis. However, for the capillaries to continue to mature, oxygen is needed for that energy for them to grow. And oxygen free radicals are oxygen is needed, sorry, to create free radicals to combat infection and also signal for those new cells to migrate into the tissues. So there was a paper from Malaysia and they looked at the transcutaneous oxygen levels on amputated toes and the ones that had the higher oxygen levels went on to healing and as you can see from the slides the ones that had poor oxygen levels either failed to heal or were very slow to heal. 
again with the NDFA, when they looked at why wounds were, weren't healing, again it was the ischemic wounds that were causing the problems and leading to amputations. So, as we know, chronic wounds are an issue in the UK. We know that chronic wounds require more oxygen, but often have a lower supply due to the underlying conditions. And as I said on the previous slide, the National Diabetic Foot Audit has shown ischemic wounds are less likely to heal, are more likely to cause hospital admissions, and are more likely to lead to major amputations. What we don't know is how the healthy body delivers and regulates the oxygen. So, in the healthy body, as we breathe, we take in oxygen into the alveoli, that passes through the alveoli into the blood bloodstream and connects with the haemoglobin which transports it through the, vessel wall, through the vessels and then leaches the oxygen, diffuses the oxygen through those vessel walls into the tissues that require it for energy or healing. So how does the human body regulate that oxygen supply? In the lungs they're oxygen rich and the haemoglobin loads up with oxygen but doesn't really sit. As it reaches a resting cell, the pressure of 40 millimetres of mercury will release a quarter of this oxygen into the cells. And when it reaches an active cell, either by exercising or healing, partial pressure is 20 millimetres of mercury, and that will release three quarters or 75% of the oxygen. But what happens in chronic wounds? We know how it works in a healthy human body, and we know there's a lack of oxygen in many chronic wounds. So what about the oxygen in the air? There's more than enough, but oxygen does not diffuse well through liquid, so the wound exudate blocks this getting into the wound bed. So what choices do we have? Do we revascularise? But are all our patients suitable for revascularisation? Do we dry out the wounds? But we know we need a moist wound bed for the cells to migrate and help heal these wounds. So we need to look away to find a way to transport the oxygen through the exudate. We need some sort of oxygen therapy. So there are very various types of oxygen therapy already out there. There's the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which may enhance the body's natural healing process by in inhalation of 100% oxygen in a total body chamber, where we, the pressure is controlled and increased. It could be a pressure delivery system where oxygen is providing a simple plastic tube in which is placed around the limb or over the area with the ulcer and a constant pressure is maintained within that chamber to help heal the wound. There could be an oxygen wound dressing where oxygen is embedding in the dressing and released by a chemical reaction, usually in a hydrogel. Or there could be a device which could delivers continuous oxygen through a very small cannula to essentially an occlusive wound dressing. Or there could be an oxygen diffusion enhancer. Haemoglobin acts as a carrier, augments the transport of oxygen by means of a facilitated delivery. So there was a paper that ran a systemic review of these different types of therapy against standard care. And when they looked at hyperbaric oxygen therapy and the topical oxygen therapy, both of these had positive results, but the systemic review suggested that the data was quite weak for these studies. However, when they looked at the facilitated, facilitated diffusion, when it's applied with dressing changes, it keeps working for days. There have been a few studies on this, but highly positive and up to twice the success rate versus standard care alone. The systemic review also compared ease of use and the cost of these approaches. And as you can see, hyperbaric oxygen had a high cost and also required patients to go to a specialist centre, whereas the diffusion enhancer has a low cost and is easier to use. I'm now just going to run through a case report of a patient that came to me in Swansea in South Wales. This lady had type 2 diabetes of 10 years duration she had neuropathic feet and peripheral vascular disease in her left foot. She was initially referred with cellulitis to her left foot and a plantar ulcer of the first metatarsophalangeal joint. Her diabetes was very poorly controlled. Her HbA1c was at 95 millimoles. Her BMI was 32. She was a smoker. 
She had high cholesterol levels and her left toe pressure was only 0.43 millimetres of mercury. Her current medication was Novamix insulin. She was on tramadol for pain and duloxetine for neuropathic pain and simvastatin for her cholesterol. She'd had several admissions for IV antibiotics and on her last admission ended up with a ray amputation of her left second toe due to osteomyelitis. This ray amputation site was initially dressed with a hydrofiber dressing as the wound bed became sluffy, but this did not improve over the next few weeks. By the beginning of May, she reluctantly agreed to buy a surgery, which cleared the wound bed to healthy granulation tissue within a few days. But to maintain a healthy wound bed, it was dressed with a lipocolloid wound contact dressing for the next four weeks. But the wound continued to develop stuff and recent cultures from a wound swab indicated she required a further course of oral antibiotics. She was reviewed in our department a week later after these antibiotics with her pra practice nurse redressing twice a week. And although the infection had diminished, the wound bed was not improving, so we decided to add granulox to the, this dressing regime. And within a week, the wound bed showed signs of healthy granulation tissue. The wound was continued to be dressed twice a week with granulox until it healed and this happened in the beginning of September that year. So, when do you use it? Chronic wounds need oxygen, so how do we know, know to use this oxygen therapy? An expert panel report published this year went on to show us when to use this. A pathway was developed looking at the holistic approach to in treating a diabetic foot ulcer and look to optimise standard of care as first point and then look to implement topical oxygen therapy when needed on the right patient at the right time. This panel concluded that topical oxygen therapy should be considered as an adjunct to best practice for diabetic foot ulcers as it's been shown to be beneficial and improve outcomes in these suitable patients. So if you want a free copy of this report, please email this address below. So in conclusion, chronic wounds are often hypoxic. Oxygen is really crucial to wound healing and oxygen therapy can be a very useful adjunct when dealing with a chronic wound that is ischemic. So now we'll move on to our real-time question and answer session. So remember, you can take part at any time by commenting on the video. So question one, are there any times where you wouldn't use the oxygen therapy? Well, you'd have to check that the patient didn't have any um, allergies to any of the constituents in the oxygen therapies that would you know, make it contradictory to you using that uh, oxygen therapy. So, there would be times when you wouldn't use it and obviously if the patient wasn't willing to have this oxygen therapy used on them. So question two, I don't know much about diabetes, why does it affect the feet the way it does? It does. Well with diabetes, if you've um, not been very well controlled, the extra glucose or sugar that travels in your blood can damage your nerve endings and your blood supply. And if you can't feel your feet because of damaged nerve endings, you don't know when you're damaging your feet. And that's why patients with wounds are very slow to heal because they don't know they've damaged them and they carry on walking on them and causes further damage. So that's why diabetes can affect the feet. So question three, which patients do you think are most suitable for oxygen therapy? Well, if you've had a patient that's been difficult to heal in the past, if they've come in with a repeated wound, if you know they've got peripheral vascular disease, or if they've had a wound some time and nothing seems to be shifting it, again, using oxygen therapy can help to stimulate that wound to heal. So then that's the time I would think of using um, some oxygen therapy. How often would you suggest using the facilitated diffusion? Again, that depends on the size of the wound and if it was heavily exuding. 
If you are having to change the dressings frequently, then I would suggest you would use it at every dressing change. So again, my patient, we only used it twice a week on, on, on wound dressing changes. Um, so it depends on each individual case. Question five, I've never heard of any of these therapies. Are they readily available or only via tissue viability nurses? Um, again, they are readily available, but again, it depends on your different health boards or CCGs as to whether they're on their specialist formulary. And again, it would usually be in, in, initiated by um, a wound care specialist, either a podiatrist with an interest in wound healing or a tissue viability nurse. Question six, what would you recommend, what would you recommend should make the decision on using oxygen therapy and which type to use? Right, well again, um, making a decision on the oxygen therapy would be again on the clinician's um, holistic assessment of that wound and which type to use would depend on how, if you could access hyperbaric oxygen therapy, if it was available to that patient, um, if it, if you were wanting the patient to be treated at home, then obviously using something topical would be uh, more useful for that patient. So again, it depends on each different case. Is oxygen therapy new? Um, I guess it's not really. I'm, I'm not quite sure how long hyperbaric oxygen therapy has been used for treatment, but um, topical treatments have been around for quite some time as well. So no, it's not that new. Question eight, you said earlier to not change the dressing regime often, but what if the wound bed changed condition? Well, if the wound bed changed condition, you'd have to reevaluate and use your professional judgment on what you should use then and whether you should need to control the exudate levels if the wound bed was getting wetter and then decide as and when you would need the oxygen therapy to uh, facilitate the healing with that wound. I hope that helps. Question nine, what are the side effects of oxygen therapy? I really don't know uh, if there are any side effects really. Um, uh, perhaps I can look into that and get that back to you at some other time. Question 10, does oxygen therapy affect the oxygen levels in the blood? Um, I guess the hyperbaric oxygen therapy would, uh, hence it's, it's, you're, you're inhaling it, so it is going to get into the bloodstream. Um, with the topical treatments, I don't know whether that affects the oxygen levels in the blood. Again, I'd have to look into that and get back to you. Question 11. What other factors within the diabetic foot would you need to get right before using oxygen therapy? Well, you need to make sure that the patient was uh, systemically well, that it wasn't systemically infected, um, that you had controlled the localised um, infections in the area, else that's going to impair the healing in any case. Again, it's just a holistic assessment of the wound prior to using any sort of treatment, uh, as well as the oxygen therapy. Question 12. Does Granulox promote moist wound healing? Um, Again, the real, I'm not quite sure how to answer that question. I'm sure it would promote moist wound healing as I've seen wounds heal along quite well with uh, using Granulox, but um, I could look into that more for you. Question 13, does oxygen therapy work the same for each different type of wound or does it have a different impact on different wound types? I guess oxygen therapy would work for each type of wound, because um, all wounds need oxygen in some way or another, um, whether some wounds would be slower to heal and impact differently, um, I, I honestly can't answer that. So um, I know it works well with diabetic foot wounds. Question 14. In your opinion, does early intervention help save costs? Again, yes. Um, being proactive, knowing that wounds can with a diabetic foot especially, can be very slow to heal. And particularly if it's a patient you know has had a wound before that's been slow to heal, it's better to act quickly rather than de delay any sort of interventions. And that will help to save costs, I'm sure, especially for the patient. Question 15. What about vascular issues as well as diabetic issues? 
Absolutely. What about the vascular issues? They can be used on patients without diabetes. If they've got a vascularly compromised wound, again, yes, this would be an ideal opportunity to help promote that wound to heal. Question 15. Are COPD patients able to use oxygen therapy? I'm not quite sure about the hyperbaric oxygen um, or any of the other um, oxygen therapies, but I guess a topical treatment would be well uh, suitable for these type of patients. Question 16. Can GPs prescribe oxygen therapy? Um, I'm not sure about the hyperbaric oxygen therapies, but I, I know that they can prescribe any of the, the dressings or the treatments. They, they, can, they are willing, able to prescribe those for patients. Question 17. Would it still help people with severe vascular insufficiency? Um, again, you have to address the, what's, um, if they are suitable for vascular, vascular revascularization. Um, to help the vascular insufficiency. If they're not, it's better than them continuing with a chronic wound. It, it's worth a try. Question 18. Does the wound need to be debrided? Yes, if, if the wound bed is sluffy or has a lot of callus around it, yes, it does need to be debrided before you, treat, you start with any sort of treatment. And obviously offloading is a great um, way of helping the wound as well. Where can we get a copy of the systemic review? Um, well, I'm sure you can get back into this presentation later and there was um, an email link for you to get um, a copy of, of this uh, review. And our final question for this evening, is oxygen therapy better than lava therapy? Um, I can't say one is better than the other. If you've got a very mucky wound, you need those little maggots in there to clean it up. And what I would say is get your oxygen therapy on this straight after you've cleaned up that wound. So this concludes our live training session for this evening. Any questions I've been unable to get to will be answered after today's event. And I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank Monica for their support for this event this evening. So to access your certificate of attendance, please, please follow the link shown on screen now. So I hope this has helped you gain a better understanding of how topical oxygen therapy can help us in this treatment of diabetic foot ulcers. If you've enjoyed this event today, please like the Wound Care Today Facebook page for details of upcoming events and thank you.